to show this DLC off in? Well, because it's a, got a lot of huge fields. And what better way of showing off big equipment than to use big fields? So let's go ahead and just kind of jump on in and start taking a look at this stuff. So we've got the John Deere 9RX here. I've got the 9260 version. And I have to say, this is a pretty impressive model. Hey, CD Sang. Hey, Charles. What's up? So, first off, we've got a really nice grill here going on. Now, I do have to point out the EU warning labels or warning signs, placards, whatever they are. Um, I mean, this is, in all intents and purposes, a Canadian equipment DLC. So, all of this equipment behind us is from a Canadian company. But we have the EU placards on this John Deere tractor. Seriously, would it have killed giants to give us an option of having the EU placards or having the North American placards? All we really want here in North America is to be able to, well, have trackers, tractors that don't have these red and white signs all over the place. So we can see into the engine compartment through the back little back section of the grill there. Really good details. Now something else I noticed on this particular tractor is there's a cable there in the front and the cable runs all the way along the back all the way along, uh, not on the back, but underneath the tractor here to the back section. I don't know if that's like to keep the tractor together in the event that it separates or something. Uh, so what I noticed is over here on the quad track, the same cable. There's the same cable. I hadn't noticed it before. The cable's there on the quad track also. Hey, Hoot, what's up? Raznik, how you doing? So what I did earlier is I wanted everybody to realize that, well, the new equipment isn't the only big equipment in the game. So what I did earlier was basically I went through the base equipment, the base tractors, and everything else. I went through the base equipment um, and pulled up everything that was in the same horsepower range as the John Deere. So you can see we've got five tractors, all that have the same horsepower output within the same range as the John Deere. So if you're not a John Deere fan, you do have in-game equipment that you can use on this stuff. And then I went through and pulled up some big cultivators that we have, some big cedars that we have of various sizes, all which are comparable in size to the new DLC equipment. Uh, this is the biggest cedar we ha or weeder we have, which is, well, dwarfed by the new giant weeder in game. And then we've got this massive cultivator. And just looking at the width of this, that was something else I wanted to pull this up for, was I really wanted to see what this stuff looked like as far as width goes. So this is the Seed Hawk from the Big Bud DLC in Farm Sim 17. You can see how wide that thing is. See how it goes wider at the top uh, as compared to at the bottom. Now let's run over here and just look at the new big cedar. This is one of the new big cedars and you can see that it is well, it's narrower than the seed hawk and that was something that I was really curious on would be how practical would it be trying to drive this big equipment down roads. And then this thing here, this thing is absolutely massive. Uh, for cedar, the way it unfolds is crazy. I mean it is really narrow but it is massive. Well, let's look at this stuff in the store. So, obviously, the tractor is going to be under large tractors. So, we've got the John Deere 9RX series here, $428,500. Got a base horsepower config of 517 horsepower. And the only real configuration options we've got here is engine and track width. We're at our standard width. We got a three meter wide. So make it a little bit wider. That's it. Would it really have killed giants to have put another clicker here 
for EU or Giant Orange Triangle. That's what I want. I want a clicker here that gives me Giant Orange Triangle. That's all I want. I might actually drive John Deere tractors if I could get a Giant Orange Triangle. No, not really. Just saying. So we've got the 9470, 517 horsepower, the 9250, or the 9520, 572, 9570, 628, 9620, 670 horsepower top end. So how does that compare to other things? So we've got the quad track, tops out at 692 horsepower. Got the Fent 1100 MT, tops out at 646. Hey, Wiki Farms, Jonathan, or Johan, what's up, Michael? Farm Alls Forever, Wiki Farms. So we got the Challenger MT900, tops out at 646. Challenger MT800E, tops out at 646. And the New Holland T9 tops out at 550. So all of those are within the same horsepower range as 9RX, 515 to 670 horsepower. Now, the easiest way to find all of the other stuff is to go to Brands and then the Borgo or Galt, however you want to say it. So we basically have two air carts and two feeders that go with the air carts. Then we have a cultivator, 12 meter cultivator. We have a 30, sorry, a 21 meter weeder. And then we have a kind of an all-in-one cedar air cart combo that's eight meters working with. Let's take a look here at weeders. So the new big beast, XR770 Harrow, $56,000, 21.3 meters. Previous champion was 15.2. So this is the new, the new leader by quite a bit. Only $45,000, $56,000. But it's not that much more expensive. 350 horsepower. But what I wanted to do is kind of demonstrate some of this stuff. I've got some stuff already set up here on the map. So here we've got the John Deere. You see the interior. You can hear the engine sound. Rev it up. See the display on the post. Don't have any animated pedals or anything like that. Oh, we do have an animated pedal there. Interesting. I would not have expected the brake to be over there and to be a single brake, but anyway. So we do have light indicators. So we've got our in cab lights. We've got our first stage light button, second stage light button. And then we do have hazards or four ways. I like that pulsing light. You see that's our four-way flashers there. I like that. That's pretty cool. And then we do have a hazard light indicator. We've got that going on. Uh, we don't have the uh, turn signal indicator doesn't change when we do uh, signals. Overall, pretty nicely detailed interior, I think. Get a little low res down there on the back of the cab. Down to a wrench hanging up, hanging up here in cab. I guess that's not a wrench. That's is that like a seatbelt cutter? What that might be. Thanks for the sub, Mr. Dude Man. That's right. I'm not looking at any mods. Only talking about base game stuff. The Big Bud is a mod, so we didn't bring any of that up. So this is the Mega Weeder. I don't think I actually pulled that up in the shop, did I? So the Mega Weeder, we have two configuration options on that. So the base, 21 meters. Oh, sorry, this is bigger than that. I've got the Big Boy. 27.4 meters. Look how that thing just grows. 
So that's the base, $56,000. 60500 That is the weeder we've got. I mean, if you're playing without seasons, this thing is going to work through a field like no tomorrow. Oh, thanks for the sub. Uh, yeah, that dude. Now, this thing is kind of a little wonky when you drive it. Kind of. Can you see how it's kind of... Back is kind of wigwamming back and forth. Kind of weird. Let's unfold this thing and just see how it looks. The wheels rotate out, and then it spins around. Pretty cool. Go over here and take a look at the details. So, I mean, I was kind of ragging on this DLC when it first was announced because I really wasn't that big of a fan of just having even more big stuff. But I do have to say these models are pretty nice looking. I mean, we've got really clear, you can almost read these. In fact, we'll see that we can read, almost read several of the other labels fairly well. Got springs here. Made in Canada, we can clearly read. Electrocution hazard. Warning labels all over the place on this. Look, see, they know what an orange triangle is. Lower it down. Now, can we hire a helper? Yep, we can hire a helper. Now, look at that massive swath of weed free ground we have here. Uh, sending it in, Sashquan. It is if you direct download from Giants. You pre-ordered from Giants. I'll take a look at the dirt mask on the tracks. If you direct download it from Giants, you can uh, down <laughs> download it from their website now. You got it from can or not from Steam? Sorry, you got it from Steam. You'll probably have to wait till about mid-morning tomorrow Eastern time, uh, depending on when that is for you, your time zone. You can get the dirt mask on the. Uh, on the wheels. Let's throw up our dev controls and let's add full dirt. See what this thing looks like fully dirty. We've got full dirt on the tractor now. Windshield's got some dirt on the bottom. That's nice. We don't really impede our view. The interior of the cab's a little bit dirty, but not too terrible bad. Curious how this thing is going to turn. So we do have the bottom drive shaft here is animated, but there is a top one you can barely see there. Maybe we'll see it when it turns. It's not turning. Now the case quad track, both of these are rotating, but on this one it's not. And I'm curious if we're going to see that rotation if we, you know, activate the PTO or something. See when we turn, there's that knuckle right there uh, above the shaft that is rotating that isn't rotating. Now on the quad track, it does rotate. Just go over here to the quad track. And I'll show you the quad track does rotate. You see there we've got that one rotating. But if we turn, we can see that other one above it. Also rotating. So that's not rotating on the John Deere. That one above it. So, like I said, I'll be curious if we see it uh, working if we fire up something that has a PTO on it.
seven miles an hour be able to weed I mean there are some fields that aren't this wide it's just crazy let's fold it up I like that let's take a look kind of staggered when it raises Hold it up. See how hydraulics. Oh, it's keeping it. What's moving? It's interesting there isn't anything like locking those two in place. Well, what's amazing, Raz, is I'm reading mines in the future because there is a little bit of a delay in chat. Right? All right, so let's see. Do I have anything up here that has a PTO on it? I don't think I do. That's not PTO, that's not PTO, that's not, definitely not. Nope, alright, so let's go get something. Let's get something that's PTO. So the magic of teleportation. Oh, yeah, here's the horn. I've heard better horns on a... Uh... All right, all right, we got that going now. Nope. It's not spinning. You can see it's stationary. Hope you're able to see that. All right. Hey, Isaac, what's up? All right, let's take a look at this cultivator now. Uh, this cultivator is rather interesting. Take a look at it in shop. So under cultivators, we've got the new one. 12 meter cultivator. Well, it's not the biggest cultivator in the shop. We've got the big 24 meter beast. We also have the Bendar 18 meter beast from the Big Bud DLC. Both of these are from the Big Bud DLC. Uh, we've got Bruiser 12XL, 12 meters. So these are basically kin to each other. $100,000 difference. $100,000 difference between these two. No configuration options on this thing. 9 mile per hour working speed. 9 mile per hour working speed. This one does require 420 horsepower. This one is 480. It's seriously, $100,000 more. Is that legit the real price? Because if it is, that horse one is like dirt cheap. Now this does have a hitch on the back. I'm a little curious as to uh, if that will hitch anything. unfold this and see how she goes. 
before we do, let's take a closer look at it. We do have hose attachments. We've got warning labels galore. We've got gauges. There. Of course, they don't show anything. We got hoses going to hard line. And then these tines are going to what look like gas shocks. We've got springs on the uh, the rakes on the back. And then we also have, like yeah, I said, we've got a rear hitch. LED lights. Let's see, do we have a 12 meter seater? Oh, we do. We have the Limpkin, and I got that right up here. Go check that out. Do we have a uh, 12 meter planter? We do. We've got the Vanderstand 12 meter planter. Try that out too. Oh, we didn't even see the fold. Alright, so let's unfold this thing. So it kind of unfolds and then I like that kind of jerky action going on there. You want to drop it down and kind of the springs. And hire a helper. Little movement on the springs. A little bit of animation movement on the springs as they kind of drag through the ground. It's kind of cool. Nice body flex in the whole unit. All right, let's get one of these and go get that that planter that we want to look at. Magic. We have equipped it with seed and fertilizer. Let's go see if we can hook something up to the back. Uh, this one has hoses, which is going to be cool. We see if we have hose kind of hose mat extensions. If there is anything you all want to see. Let me know in the chat. Hopefully one of the mods will keep up if I don't see it. Okay, here's the Challenger horn. Dummy hitch. It's a dummy hitch. It don't work. Oh, wait. That's a ball. That's a pin. 
Does this Limpkin have a pin? Oh, the Limpkin has a pin. Okay, let's get that. This has a plow bonus. Check in the store. Doesn't say anything about a plow bonus. Uh, does this field need plowing? It doesn't give a plow bonus because this is flagged as needed plowing. That's this is the only cultivator in the pack. Look at that. Now, this one doesn't have hoses. That one didn't have hoses when we hooked up. Can't turn it on. It won't let me turn it on. So I can hook up to it, but I can't turn it on. So I do like how this thing has body flex to it like how the tines are subtly animated to them subtly moving back and forth subtly flexing a little bit and you can see the see that you see that there when we fold it and unfold it there's uh I don't know if those are like uh, hydraulic brakes, hydraulic braces, what they are, but when you fold it, they flip up. And when you unfold it, they flip down, and then obviously when you lower the whole thing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this is Nebraska Lands. You can get it over at Simply Safe Mods or um, Nexus Mods. All right, so now we've got the three cedars. Take a look at these in the shop. So let's take a look at the small one first. We have the FMS CD 872-8, $182,000. Eight meter working width. This is a cedar, so we've got our wheat, barley, oats, canola, soybeans, oil seed radish, grass, and that's that's part of the map. That's alfalfa. Ignore that one. So this holds seed and fertilizer. 11 mile per hour working speed, 240 horsepower requirement, so pretty low in the horsepower. 7,200 liter capacity on that.
stops. Okay. So here we are. Let's let's go back. Go back. So there are no configuration options on this thing. And all of these have this cool bulk boom, but the bulk boom is non-operable. It is just visually there. But it would be cool if you, you could use that bulk boom using the joystick controls to like pick up big bags and put them in the uh, in the seed hopper there. So here we have it. Lots of warning labels again. This is something that seems to have uh, have really kind of taken taken giants by storm. Is all these warning labels? Is if we run over here, let's say to this stuff that was part of the Big Bud DLC. And we've got a few labels, but not a lot of stuff. Not a lot of stuff has labels on it. As compared to, you know, the Canadian stuff. Maybe maybe Canada just requires a heck of a lot more warning labels on stuff. You know, there really aren't a lot of labels. Oh, I didn't even know this thing had gauges. That's the Seed Hawk from last year's Big Bud Pack. Or 17's Big Bud Pack. But you see there's a massive, massive amount of labels on this new stuff. You can see how the labels look. More gauges. Hoses, hard pipes. There's a bulk boom. And we even have a place for buckets. So we've got two five gallon buckets in holders here at the bottom of this one. We've got five gallon buckets over here under the seat cart for the other two also. And the warning labels continue if we go up. We've got more there. We've got labels on the, uh, the, door <laughs> the doors up here. Labels on the pipes, T3 seed, T4 seed, T1 seed, and then there's a T2 seed, for the, I guess T is the tank, you know, seed tank. Oh, I see the other half has made it into chat. Toss, let's get rid of the dirt. And let's put some wear on this thing. So just looking at the wear mask. Girls, what's that? Potted up with rocks? I don't understand that. A little chipping on the. Uh, sides of stuff. Not a lot of wear. Just kind of subtle. Kind of subtle wear on this also. Let's go over here and fill it up. Hey, Farm and Race Gaming, what's up? We've got a couple uh, trailers of seed and fertilizer. Unfold this. Check the F1 menu. And open the cover. 
we get cool animations on the handles. Check that again. We've got little ladders into the seat tank. But alas, looks like we're going to have to uh, magic fill this one because we don't have um, we don't have uh, conveyor belts or anything. Uh, what about tomatoes in Nashville? Fill it up. So when full, 2,850 liters of fertilizer, 4,350 of wheat. Drop it down. Turn it on. Can we hire a helper? Indeed, we can. So, I'm sure everyone is wondering can you refill the John Deere with fuel? I mean, after the Klost debacle. You wouldn't think we'd have to ask that question of a giant DLC. Can you fill it with fuel? Well, I've tested, and we can definitely fill this with fuel. So it passes. Can you refill it? Yes. So uh, while this isn't the widest cedar, obviously, in the bunch, it sure does hold a lot of product. Now, why am I not... We're going through product, but incredibly slow. And that almost feels wrong slow. I have this. Where is it? Oh. oh. There, that makes more sense. That makes more sense. All right, so let's see. What's the, uh, what's the seed to fertilizer ratio? So we're at 4294 with wheat and we're at 2824 with fertilizer. Let's use 10 wheat and see how much fertilizer we've used. I mean, I really like the fact that we hold a lot more seed than fertilizer. That seems to be a problem on some some stuff where you hold a massive amount of fertilizer. We're hitting the wrong buttons. Turn it on. All right. So we used a little bit more than 10 units of, of seed and we only used six units of fertilizer. Looks like on this. Thanks for the sub, Rhoda. So 
let's go look at these other two. I'm going to save the beast last. The next one is getting pretty big. The next one is the 3320-76 Paralink O drill. Uh, this does offer the ability to direct seed. All of these offer the ability to direct seed. So we don't have to cultivate or plow if we don't want to. Now these are expensive. $273,000 for the cedar part. And then we need to buy an air cart. Another $272,000 for the small, quote, small air quote, small air cart. Or $331,000 for the big air cart. So this can easily clear $550,000, $600,000 for one of these seating setups. Same standard seating props. No configuration options on kind of the cedar aspect and this is a dolly trailer basically this is a front dolly so if you don't like dolly stuff and this one might not interest you 23.2 meters so how does that compare to the seed hawk 25.6 meters the uh terminator th18 18 meters so this one slots just a little bit smaller than the Seed Hawk. The Seed Hawk air cart is 34,500 liters of product. The suggested air cart for this one is 33,475. So it's just slightly smaller. Now this air cart, we do have standard option, the wheels, single wheels, rear twins, are twins all around take the cost up to two hundred eighty one thousand dollars all right catch you later chevy we're gonna take a look at it so once again we continue with the really great really nice graphics on all of these warning labels a tire swing hazard important something gauges this is a swivel front axle. See the hose hookups. Pin. I'm surprised the pin doesn't have anything on the bottom to hold it in. And I'd really be worried that this would pop out. So I did get it with the duels. Like I mentioned earlier. They even have modeled two five-gallon buckets in their holders underneath. So, just like the other one, this one does come with a big boom on the side, but the boom is just stationary. It's not, not operable. We have saddle tank, E5. On the top here, we have tanks 1A, 1B, tanks 2, 3, and 4. Then we have our big filling belt auger. So we're going to go fill this thing up using this belt auger. This also has a hitch on the back. Not really sure what you would pull behind this thing. Other than maybe a, a trailer with a whole ton of seed or fertilizer in it. And this is a dolly also, so it can be a little fun hooking up. Uh, Caleb, I think it's just like to, uh, I think they're just used to like clean up messes and spills. Yeah, if we take a look, F1 menu. If we toggle back 
do the uh, the air cart. If we had mouse controls, then we could possibly control that bulk boom, but we don't have anything. If we hit open cover, we will uh, swing out the uh, the auger. Go ahead and do that. Hit open cover in. We see the animation on the auger. The doors open up. Hit in. Go to the other tank. I'm not really sure why this thing is bouncing. In. We'll then cover it back up. Go ahead and I wouldn't think you wouldn't pull a weeder right behind it, I wouldn't think. But uh, the sprayer, I think you would lose. I mean, you'd be kind of inefficient with your product. Seriously. So we can see the seed flowing in. It's already filled up. Oh, the jump in is due to the mud mod. In, go to the next. Here. Oh, we met, oh, there we go. We saw a little bit of animation going in there. Not a lot, but we saw it a little. So, in. Let's fold this thing back up. Yeah, at the heart of it, we're talking about a massive weeder. Showed that off first. A fairly large cultivator, not the largest cultivator we have in our standard list of equipment, but a fairly nice sized cultivator. Then we've got, of course, the John Deere that sells everything. That's why they put it in here. Um, you know, we've got a 9 meter air cart seeder right there. Not a bad little deal. Only 240 horsepower for that. So it's something different. Nicely detailed. I do, you know, I do kind of like the buckets. Cool. Read to avoid damage. Read the owner's manual, the big boom. 2400 maximum capacity or pounds. Let's unfold this thing.
hoses unfold nicely. Hoses are flexing good. I, think we have the, I like how we have the hoses going to hard line and then back to hoses where we have something that flexes. down oh are you kidding whoa stop 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 what did you just do so that was pretty cool let's lower that down so we kind of get this tiered thing kind of go from above and see if we can see it all moving So it doesn't all lower at once, it kind of lowers in sections. That's kind of cool. Oops, wrong button, wrong button. Look at your keyboard before you mess it up. Hit all the wrong buttons today. So this one holds about the same amount of product. 15,800 liters of fertilizer, 17,500 liters of seed. I mean, but that is a serious air cart. This isn't even the biggest one. Looking at some of the animations here. On the dirt maps. Alright, while that one does its thing, let's look at the big boy. So the previous King of the King of the Hill in Cedars was the Vanderstand Seed Hawk. From the big bud pack 25 meters now we have the big boy 30 meter working width 30.5 meter working width four hundred and thirty thousand dollars just for the seed part the cedar part 11 miles per hour seed hawk was also 11 miles per hour but this thing is massive all of our standard products, this is direct seed. 71 300 air cart, an additional $331,000. So this is going to, configuration options with, notwithstanding, $762,000 for the following cedar that we're about to look at. $762,000. how massive this thing is no configuration options on this one 600 horsepower requirement no configuration options on this massive air cart 45,810 liters worth of product they'll have our five gallon buckets down there See how well the A hide turns that thing around? On the edge of the map, nonetheless. I mean, but a set of these is going to really clean house. Alright, we'll let that one run.
So the whole DLC is 300 and yeah, I put it in our Discord. Uh, the whole DLC is 379 megs. Not too terrible bad for all of the models. Alright, so there we go. We're hooked up. Take a look at this thing. So this is not Dolly. So it's on a kind of a spindle. This front wheel kind of spindles. This thing is massively long. The way this thing unfolds is pretty interesting. This is just a bigger version of the other air cart. You know, we still have our cool details. We got our buckets. We got our warning labels all over the place. We have our sad, sad little boom that doesn't do anything. Walk up our stairs. I mean, we can almost read these labels. Tank pressurized to prevent an injury, something injury. Do not open hatch while something is running. The hoses, then we go to kind of some hard tubing. Go back to our flexos. Let's unfold this thing and watch its animation. One side folds down. The other side folds down. And then the whole thing wings open and pulls the air cart forward. That is a process. Hold that up. I don't know where the hydraulic cylinders are that's doing all this. I mean, that is some serious engineering. I'll go back to our air cart. I mean, I can't even zoom out any further. Zoomed all the way out, and I'm like at the complete rear. All right, in. Unfold the boom. We had a little little difficulty finding the trigger on the other one. There we go. There we got her filling. Didn't even fill it all away. Oh, check that out. So we got a little ladder. 
And then inside we have T1, T3. We kind of have fill gauges. That's pretty cool. Walk a mile to uh, get from the air cart to your cedar. I like the delay when you start filling it there's kind of a delay as you wait for the belt to fill the product that's kind of cool let's close that up we have the same animated latches do we have the same animated latches on this? No, we don't. Those latches aren't animated. They just open and close. Thicker lights. The light on that boom. Oh, we do have a light. Look at that. We got a light on the boom. Lights on top of the air cart. Let's fill this up and see what it holds. What? I'll go to the air cart and fill it up. So, 20,260 liters of fertilizer, 25,000 liters of wheat. Hey, Charlie, what's up? Well, we hooked up the we hooked up that one cultivator and the uh, the limpkin there, and we couldn't get the limpkin to start. Actually, no. I'm gonna go up here to this other field. out of the way. So we couldn't hook up this planter to the cultivator because it had the wrong hitch. It had a ball hitch as opposed to a pin hitch. We tried to hook it up to this limpkin which had the right hitch but I couldn't turn it on. Hey Carter, what's up? I looked at that Virginia Geo. I didn't know. I didn't look at it more than just what's on the mod hub. I mean, we do cotton. So it allowed cotton. I didn't see if it allowed sugar cane because that's below the fold. Looked like it would let us do. Uh, looked like it would let you do um, double crop, which I know we we do. Yep, I'll do that. Unfold this beast.
So let's watch this unfold animation once again. So it's tiered. One, two, three on that side. One, two, three on that side. And then those things just, then the wheels come down and then they all just swing in. So I'm not seeing the, where's the hydraulics hat that's doing that? And then they join in the middle and then those two fold down, the legs fold down and there you go. The air cart is a dolly cart. So it's one of those things where you might have trouble getting it lined up. I don't know why it wouldn't work. Caleb, other than... Are you... What? Other than... Uh, just getting around the roads and through fences. As with any big equipment, that's really your limitation. All right, let's hire a helper. Oh, 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 I'm crooked. Joys of a map with multi-terrain angle. Now let's hire a helper. Great. So a pair of these will just tear up. I mean, it will just tear up Nebraska lands map. All right, so while it's running, let's take a look at everything in the shop once again. So we have, of course, the John Deere 9RX. Right here, $428,500. $517 horsepower. So we have the choice of engines. The 9470RX, the 9520RX, the 9570RX, and the 9620RX, topping out at 670 horsepower. We have a choice of standard tracks or 3 meter wide tracks. That's all the configuration options. So this thing will top out at $510,000. Okay. Then go to brands. We'll go to the Borgo brand. Borgot, Borgot, whatever. So we've got the 3320 76 Paralink Ho Drill. $273,500 just for the seed part. 23.2 meters. Then we have the matching air cart for that, $272,000. $33,475 liters of product split between seed and fertilizer. No configuration options for the seeder portion. Okay, and this is a direct seeder, so we don't have to cultivate our plow before we can use this. The air cart, we have standard tires. Rear twins are front and rear twins. This will top out at $281,000. So this combination is pretty expensive. What's that? $525,000 for that combination, which is currently over here on... So that's this combination right here. <laughs> um, just ignore the fact that we're seeding over the soy soybeans. That happens when you have super wide stuff. So that's this setup right here. Okay.
Then we have Massive Cedar, the 3420-100. That's the one we're in right now. 30 and a half meter working width. $430,500, 600 horsepower requirement. Again, there's no configuration options on this thing. This massively huge, long, long product. Then we have the air cart that goes with it. 45,800 liters worth of product. Again, split between seed and fertilizer. No configuration options on this. And this is going to rock your world at $762,000. For that configuration, right there, minus the tractor. Add the tractor and you are at $1.2 million easy. You're going to be able to chew through a ton of ground. 30 meters per pass. We just chewed through 30 meters worth of seed. The ground. Now we're working on our 60 meter pass. Let's look at that. That's massive. That's one pass. This is a 4x map. Okay. So. So if we go to about here. And we go about. Probably a little bit north of this road. That's. A standard size map. We're doing a massive amount of of groundwork. It's it's even big for a four X map. So those are the two air cart seeders. Then we have the smaller seeder, the FMS CD eight seventy two dash eight. Okay, this is only an eight meter seeder. But includes basically its own air cart on it. 7,200 liters worth of product. Again, split between seed and fertilizer. No configuration options on this. $182,500. 240 horsepower. Then we have this massive weeder. Okay. So this massive weeder comes in two variants. Got the XR770 70, 21.3 meter working width, 350 horsepower requirement, $56,000. Or we go to the XR770 90, adds a whole extension on the back. Okay, we have one, two, three. Now one, two, three, four. So it adds another whole set of rakes. On either side, 27.4 meter working width, $60,500 for this thing. And this is a little weird to drive because there isn't anything here in the back. You would think there'd be something back here in the back to hold these two together. But there really isn't holding anything together. So when you turn these, they kind of kind of move around on their own. We'll go back and demonstrate those in a little bit. And then we have this cultivator. 12 meter cultivator, 480 horsepower. A whopping $189,000 for this cultivator. The same size as the Horsch um, Tiger 12, something 12. Okay. And it's a whole $100,000 more expensive. But the model's pretty cool. Got some pretty interesting animations, the way it floats and everything. <laughs> so let's go. Let's go look at the cedar again, or the weeder again. So this is Nebraska lands. This would be a perfect map for this big stuff. It's fairly wide open. There's not fences. You don't have to worry about that. Really don't have narrow roads to deal with. So this is the big weeder. 
and you'll see when we turn how that kind of goes back and forth. Kind of weird. Go ahead and unfold this again. The wheels rotate on the back. Let's fold it back up. You can see how the wheels rotate. And then it just splays open. And lays down. And we lower it. And off we go. Weeding a huge, huge swath. Now let's go here and let's get rid of the dirt. And now it's clean. Now let's add full dirt to it. Wrong way. See what it looks fully dirty. Not an excessive amount of dirt. Let's take the dirt off and add full wear. Now it's all worn down. Oh, the tines. Tines are. We've seen better days. Oh, did I start that off crooked again? Hold it back up. And off we go again. There is full wear. No dirt, minimal dirt. So here we have the cultivator. We have hose hookups. Right, so now we got a pristine pool. So those are just some rear lights that come on. They're not like brake lights, turning lights. I guess they are brake lights, but okay. Let's unfold this. It kind of starts out slow and then kind of does this jerky thing as it's lowering down. And then this had those hydraulic stops. Fold it up. We're going to lower it down, raise it, fold it. So you see those hydraulic stops going up and down. Lower it again. Drop it down.
So this, we've got kind of some animation, some movement on the tongs, the tines. Not a lot, but a little bit. The whole thing flexes and follows the contour of the ground. Get it dirty. See what it looks like all dirtied up. So the rear hitch does work with anything that's got like a pin, pin hitch. Now we've tried hooking this up with a cedar with the, um, the Lemkin. Tried hooking it up with this because it has a pin hitch. Same working with the 12 meters, but we couldn't get that turned on. So that was kind of disappointing. So now we have full wear. Pines are kind of worn down. This is some paint chips. So I tried that. I tried to go back to it, turn it on, it just wouldn't turn on. And here we have the smaller of the cedars. Let's take the dirt and the wear off. Okay. There we are. Clean. Tons of warning labels all over the place. We've got our hoses going to hard line. And they go back to hoses where they need to be. Got our bulk boom that is useless, sadly. Labels on everything. Like T4 for the fourth tank seed. Got some cool buckets down there being stored away. T1, 2, 3, and then there's this little back one on back here. I guess it's tank 4. So the end is what opens and closes the lid. Now this one has animations on the handles. We open. Okay, you see that? Unfold it. and lowered it. Turn it on. Hire a helper. And off we go.
eat the whole thing, you digit. Got that one. Then we have this one. Hold it up. Now, did you use the uh, limpkin? What cedar did you use? No, uh, the loading crane is useless. If you toggle back to it, you can see we're on the back. Implement. It's highlighted, but there's no controls for that. All we can do is swing out the uh, the bulk arm. And we'll see that we don't have animations on these handles. We we'll just open and close. We've got little ladders in there. We've got kind of fill gauges. Pretty cool. That's pretty neat. We even have a light on the boom. So at night you can uh, see. them working again and then we have the big boy over here and this one is 30 meters bolt this up and watch this animation go There it is, fully folded. And then this thing is massively long. Zoomed all the way out on the tractor camera. Barely get to the back of it. Unfold it again. Then the whole thing wings open. Again, I'm not sure where the hydraulics are that's doing that. Then when we lower it, it lowers in stages. To the front, lower it. And also has fill levels in the tank with the ladders. I don't know. I mean. When it folds, you'd think that there would be, uh... No. Oh no, what happened? I got it destroyed. Oh, uh, you'd think, like, something would have to... You know, get bigger or smaller. But there would be a cylinder that would expose itself. Go back here. Meters. 12 meters. 
Yeah, that's the only 12 meter cedar. Planters. That's the only 12 meter planter, but that one has a ball hitch. That has, yeah, that has a ball hitch. That wouldn't connect to the back. Oh no. Emitter? Well, I don't know what emitter is. Unless you're just saying meters. Well, I don't know what meters are either, but that's just a unit of measuring game. I can connect. Okay. So you can see on the bot on the top. Okay. I'm selected. I'm hitting B to turn it on. Nothing's happening. Okay, it's raised, it's lowered. Okay, I'm gonna lower that. Okay, I hit B with the front selected. Nothing happens. Toggle to the back. I don't even have the option to turn on the cedar. It's not even in there. Now if I disconnect. And go back to that, I should have the option to turn it on. Turn on sower. See, I'm seeding. It goes green. Maybe a modded cedar would work. Okay, but again, with the back selected, I can I can open the lid. I can fold it. I can lower it, but I can't turn it on. It doesn't do anything. Oh, uh, if you hire the helper. Uh, if you hire the helper, it works. You gotta be a little more clear with that. Now, <laughs> a little jacked up high. A little jacked up high, but at any rate, it works. You hire the helper. So, guys, that is it. That is the Borgo DLC. Again, you can download it right now from Giants if you uh, go over to the Giants website and order it. $7.99 US. Probably $7.99 no matter what currency you have. Uh, if you get it from Steam, it should release sometime probably tomorrow mid-morning. Typically when they do it. Uh, PC, PS4 and Xbox, I have no clue when that will show up for you guys. But uh, that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comments what you all think of it. I mean... For $7.99, you get eight pieces of equipment, so it's basically a buck a piece of equipment. Seriously, I hope people don't buy it just for the John Deere tractor. Seriously, I mean, that's just feeding into that whole, let's do a John Deere cotton DLC and only have one piece of John Deere equipment.
let's just, you know, come out with four or five DLCs. We'll toss a piece of John Deere equipment in there and make sure we sell something. John Deere in it, and then people will more likely buy it. I don't know about that. But let me know in the comments, what do you think of this hack? And uh, tomorrow we'll be back on Ballydorn Farm for a live stream. So until next time, happy farming.